Now, we looked a little bit at the adjective bueno. I want to talk about Spanish nouns versus Spanish adjectives. An adjective is a word which describes something else. So the word bueno in Spanish means good. Now you notice that in good days, or good day, you have buenos dias, and good afternoon, you have buenas tardes. And the form of bueno changes. However, it means good in both, both cases. If I want to talk about a good boy, it's a niña bueno. And if I want to talk about a good girl, it's a niña buena, which it also means nice. You can talk about a, a person being nice. A good class is a clase buena. A good book is a libro bueno. The ending changes, but the meaning does not. Now, I don't teach too many adjectives in the course, but you will use some adjectives and expressions like this. And as I mentioned, you want to learn them with the correct ending so you don't make a mistake in grammar. Now, notice what happens with nouns. Niño means boy. If I change the ending, it changes the meaning. Niña, to girl. Niño bueno, good boy. Niña buena, good girl. So when nouns change endings, they change meaning. One book is libro. More than one book are libros. A good boy, ni niño bueno. Good children, niños buenos. The adjective bueno changes form, but it means good in both cases. So very important to remember that. When adjectives change form, they don't change meaning. When the translated meaning into English. When nouns change form, they change meaning. Now the reason I'm saying this is we're going to learn today how to describe things using other nouns. It's a very easy way to learn how to describe in Spanish. And you don't have to change the endings of things to match. You just have to say what you mean. First, I'm going to give you some important what I'm going to call functional words. We'll start with these. The first word is en, en, which you can think of as a sort of location preposition. En means in, on, or at a location. It means in and other contexts as well. For example, in Spanish would be en español. The N with the wavy line in Spanish is like the NY of canyon. Canyon. Español. Español. Spanish. In English. En inglés, en inglés. Again, accent stress is here. This is in. Spanish I is always e. You kind of have to smile a little bit. Inglés, en inglés, en English. So, en español, en inglés. If you're at home, you could say en casa, en casa, at home. Now, the word para, which again, that Single R between vowels is like the fast double D of the English word buddy. So it's not para, it's para, 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 para. You can start to hear a D sound if you're thinking in English. Para, 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 para. And I want you to learn this as intended for. Intended for. It can also mean in order to. And several other translations in English. Intended for, or you can think of it in order to. In this context, we'll translate it as intended for. Now, intended for children would be para niños. Para niños. Intended for you, for you, would be para usted. Para usted. Now, this word, por, Again, try the ladder trick, D-D-E-R of the English word ladder, if you can't say the trill yet. Por, por, por. Looks like for, but mostly when you'll use for, it won't translate as for. The exception 
is with a portion, cute, huh, of time and money. Portion of time and money. Most of the time when you use por, por, it can translate as per or for receipt of. It's more of an exchange. Para is a preposition on a mission. It's intended for you. It's intended for children. It's from point A to point B, very goal-oriented. Por is more of an exchange. Uh, I give you the book, you give me some money. Por. For three weeks, exchange. It, it's, a, it's a duration. It's a portion of time. Para can be used for an intended date, something is due. But por is used for a portion. 